welcome to Edison Open House Global Healthcare 2022. In this session, we're going to highlight the work of Aldicure, a Swedish pharmaceutical company focusing primarily on Alzheimer's disease, but also with other interests. With me is its CEO, uh, Martin Jonsson. Hello, Martin. Hello, Vivian. How are you doing? Good, thank you. So uh, introduce us to Aldicure and the key assets that you have. Absolutely. So Alsecure is the Swedish biotech, which was founded in 2012. We are focusing on projects in small molecules with a focus on Alzheimer's disease and severe uh, pain conditions. And we are listed at NASDAQ, uh, first North Premier Growth Market since 2018. And we have two, uh, we have three platforms and two projects in clinical phase and heading into a phase two. Now, both Alzheimer's disease and pain have been much in the news uh, mm -hmm. recently. You know, mm -hmm. Adihelm, there's been a bit of a drama about uh, that with Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. And pain, of course, is very much driven mm -hmm. by the opioid crisis in mm -hmm. the States. Mm -hmm. How has that affected your business? Yeah, uh, with the approval of uh, Aduhelm, that has been very positive for us uh, since both that uh, uh, FDA has outlined the regulatory pathway, but also that we see an increasing interest from uh, from big pharma and other companies who are interested in uh, in Alzheimer's project and potentially in licensing uh, uh, projects. And uh, I also think it's very good that the discussion of the antibodies and the need of alternative treatments, which has increased the, the discussion on uh, alternative uh, Alzheimer's treatment. And this is just great for us having both preventive treatment and symptomatic treatment, uh, improving cognition and, and memory. Because the market at the moment is very focused on amyloid, isn't it? And that's not really your area. Uh, we have two projects, and one project is a gamma secretase modulator, and that project is called uh, Alstatin. And there we are focusing on uh, A beta, amyloid beta 42, which is the the source of creating the, the toxic uh, plaques. And then we have one project, which is uh, a gamma, uh, which is a modulator increasing the neurotrophic signaling of BDNF and, and NGF. So we have two different projects. And just go, tell me a bit about the pain and the painless aspect. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, how this is fitting together with uh, our endeavors in uh, in Alzheimer's disease is that we are working with uh, uh, endotrophins in NeuroRestore, and in NeuroRestore we are upregulating them. In uh, when it comes to the pain area, we are downregulating uh, neurotrophins like NGF, and there we have one project which is called Track A NAM, which is a negative allosteric modulator, blocking off and decreasing NGF uh, signaling. Uh, which is very, very interesting. And then we have an uh, TRVP1 antagonist uh, against neuropathic pain. And that project is now heading into towards uh, phase two, where we had a positive readout on in phase one earlier uh, or last year. And neuropathic pain, of course, is particularly difficult mm -hmm. to control. Mm -hmm. And just going back to the opioid story in yep. the US, very often it's neuropathic pain that people get prescribed opioids for it doesn't relieve their pain they take more opioids addiction yeah. all of yeah. those things so there's a big search isn't there for agents to deal with neuropathic pain in particular yeah. oh yeah there's a huge one i mean we know that about 80 percent of the pati patients on uh, on pain medication against neuropathic pain are not uh, uh, happy with their treatment, not feeling adequate uh, pain relief. And that market is just huge. So we are very happy to be in that field. Now, mm -hmm. let's talk about uh, Trek LA and NAM for a moment. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a preclinical project, mm -hmm. but the mechanism of action has been one that's intrigued uh, mm -hmm. and interested uh, big mm -hmm. pharma for a long time. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about that. 
Yeah, so it's like you said, uh, the interest around track a and is huge. Uh, we have seen that if you can block off uh, the NGF uh, signaling, which has been shown with uh, uh, NGF antibodies, which showed great effect, but they had, si they had side effect, which uh, made the, U uh, the FDA stop those trials. And here we have a small molecules in track a nam where we uh, see that we can block off uh, the signaling. And since there are many, big pharma companies who have uh, projects and have had projects in this field, there's a, it's a big interest. And there are also uh, projects which are in clinical phase, actually in, in phase two in both osteoarthritis and lower back pain. So there is a, a good knowledge around uh, this mechanism uh, among uh, big pharma. And uh, since we have published some of our molecules data, which we are sharing and discussing with big pharma, we, we see a very, very positive interest in, in that project. And do you see partnerships ahead? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So our model is to drive our project into early clinical phase uh, defined as uh, phase two. But we are also open to outlines and projects earlier on. But our main strategy is to outlicense one project and then to drive the other projects uh, uh, longer. So we really build uh, the shareholder value in the assets we are having. Mm -hmm. So let's return to your uh, Alzheimer's uh, mm -hmm. assets. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the current status of those mm -hmm. two particular uh, projects? Uh, one of which, of course, benefits from the interest that's and the pathway that's now being created by the yeah. Adjihelm approval yeah. and the yeah. other which I, I I guess is the backstop because lots of people are now going away from that amyloid hypothesis aren't they yeah. and looking at the other issues mm -hmm. that um that uh, people with Alzheimer's have to deal with yeah. So uh, as you say, we have two projects. Uh, when it comes to our statin, where we are decreasing the production of A beta 42 with up to 50, 60 percent, that project is in a preclinical phase and going well. We are presenting new data in a coming meeting now here in January. And then the second project, Neuro Restore, where we are enhancing the BDNF and NGF signaling. We are in uh, phase one and we are now doing the multiple ascending dose study and we are working towards having results uh, uh, towards summer. And what would the impact of that uh, mm -hmm. asset be for the patient? And what we have seen, it's a fascinating project. In preclinical, we have sh shown that this is an asset which can improve cognition, uh, improve uh, learning capabilities, and also enhance memory and help uh, uh, to remember things. So we are, uh, so both cognition, learning, and memory. So uh, that is great. And if you look at the antibodies, they are slowing off. Uh, they are disease modifiers. We are just slowing, uh, slowing down disease progression. Here we have something which can improve co cognition. So this is a really a, a great, um, great asset. And what's also very interesting here is we also see that new resources can be used in other areas with cognitive uh, deficit, like Parkinson's disease, traumatic brain injuries, uh, and also sleep disorders. And we have also data around depression. So a very, very interesting asset, truly. And uh, the main point, of course, is that it keeps it can keep Alzheimer's patients out of needing full-time care. And that's the big uh, goal for many people in this sector. Absolutely. So the reason why we are uh, working with small molecules is that we want to develop oral drugs, which, the, which are convenient both for the patient and society, and which the patient can take uh, in, in their homes instead of going into uh, uh, the clinic. So yeah, they, they are important treatments for, for the patients, truly. So it sounds like you've got an exciting time coming up, but yes. tell us what investors should be looking out for yes. in yes. the next 12 months. So uh, what investors should look out, uh, look, uh, keep a, a focus on is our results in our uh, ongoing new restore ACD 856. Uh, uh, the studies uh, uh, where we are having the results in, in the ongoing MAD, uh, MAD study, multiple ascending dose, and then uh, starting uh, the next study there for uh, focusing on efficacy signal. Then also for us starting uh, the phase two for uh, painless ACD 440 for neuropathic pain, and then also our progress when it comes to 
Alstatin and Trek Anam. So we have many interesting projects. And since we have a lot of discussions also with uh, um, potential uh, licensing companies, yeah, uh, we look forward to the future, so to say. It does sound indeed a very exciting year for Alzacure. Uh, thank you so much, Martin Janssen. Thank you, Vivian, for your time. Take care.